everybody and welcome to another episode of the motherland experience it's your girl nai here in today's episode we're all about connecting back to our roots i have a very dynamic guest here with me today so strap on your boots and stay tuned hey everybody words cannot express how much i love this lady sitting right next to me i have known her ever since practically i have been in ghana she is i call her one of my aunts here in ghana so you guys please Help me welcome Miss Naya. Hi, Naya. Greetings, greetings. How are you, my dear? Uh, I am good. How are you? I am well. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the channel. You are, I have to say, a very interesting guest. I'm going to tell you why. Because of your background. Your background is very diverse. It's just all-encompassing. So please, can you, can you tell us where you're from? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure where I'm, I'm from. So <laughs> I was know, guys. born at Koribu <laughs> Hospital in mm -hmm. Ghana mm. to two African-Americans who got on a freighter boat and came here back in the 60s wow. uh, at the behest of Father Nkrumah. And they lived here for like four years. And my sister mm -hmm. Ama and myself was, were born here. Mm -hmm. And then um, after the coup, I was about one year old and mm -hmm. they had to leave. So I oh, was wow. away from Ghana for like 50 years. Then I came back uh, like seven years ago. Wow. So so I would say you're coming back to the place where you were born. Correct. Wow. That's really deep. So I guess Ghana was calling you all along, all right? All this time. All this time. So have you lived in any other countries? Yes. So um, it was my young mother's uh, intent to go and teach school. So she had graduated mm -hmm. from college earlier. So she had gone to, um, taken us to Jamaica, to Haiti, and then we actually wow. settled in Guyana, South America. They had just received their independence from colonial rule at that point. And so we lived there for five years. Wow. So I have to say, between like here in Guyana and other, other places that you've been, how is Ghana similar or different to the other places? Similar is so very, I mean, Ghana is so very similar to Guyana. Really? Not only in okay. name, I'm trying to get it mixed <laughs> I up. know, right? <laughs> Not only is it similar in name, but mm -hmm. the um, topography mm -hmm. and the weather and um, the foods and the heat right and all the tropicalness and the the, the ocean they're they're almost identical wow so i guess coming back here it was in a way it wasn't it was an adjustment but you were kind of used to the whole vibe i guess you would say right yes the mm. only thing about guyana is the only english-speaking country on the south american continent oh, so okay. we were okay speaking but even though the English is broken English as if um, the same as how a Jamaican would speak. So I had right, to learn right. how to speak in the Patois. Mm -hmm. And so the main difference is that here I, I have to learn some of the, you know, the languages. Right. Exactly. But as far as the living mm -hmm. the same way and eating the same things and doing the same things, it's pretty it's much pretty spot on. Much spot on. Mm -hmm. But I would say you're still a Cali girl. Though, at heart. <laughs> Because you're from Oakland, right? Uh, Oakland, okay, so Oakland in the house, two Cali girls, all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> so here in Ghana, so you already had an attachment to Ghana because you were, you know, because you were born here. Right? Uh, actually, okay. no. No? Okay. My parents mm -hmm. did not keep in contact like they should have with their uh, Ghanaian friends from years and years back. And so okay. they may have known one or two people. And then plus my parents are very old and I didn't come back. Mm -hmm. I was like 51. So wow. the people that they may have known mm -hmm. may have passed oh, on or right. were elderly. So actually, I just came fresh. So I you just... just came fresh. So, okay, so that's leading me to this question. So why Ghana? There's like 54 countries here on this in the continent. So why Ghana? Well, we had come to the continent in the 80s and we went to okay. Nigeria and the Congo. But mm. my mom was still kind of scarred from how they had to leave. So oh, it wasn't a good you. way that they left. They were like, oh, it's a coup and you guys better get out. Right. So <laughs> she didn't bring us back to Ghana. Mm -hmm. So not until I decided I'm just going to go, let me go to where I was born. Mm, and then I, um, I, I just got on a plane one day and I just came. Wow. I didn't know anyone. I had met my, my son had met someone 
previously that week. And then they were like, well, look up this person when you get there. Mm -hmm. And then I did. And they could pick me up from the airport and adopted me into their family, really. And the rest is history. Wow. So you just came here just kind of blindly. Yep. I was supposed to stay for two months and I stayed for two years. See, (laughs) I guess she's like, I guess what? I'm calling this my home. Mm -hmm. So when you stepped off the plane, did you know that Donna was going to be your home? I did. I just got enveloped by something. Something just came over me and said, okay, you're home. Wow. That's really deep. And I was able to exhale and it's been uh, the best decision of my life. Wow. Wow. So being a woman of African descent Mm -hmm. and coming from, you know, the West, how has being here in Ghana gotten you more in touch with who you are and has connected you to your, to, I guess, saying being African? Well, I grew up in a very African centered home. So I've always Mm -hmm. been African. My mother always mm-hmm. wore an African head wrap, even though she was, you know, born in Mississippi, and mm-hmm. lived in Oakland most of her life. She's very African centered in mm-hmm. her thought process. And gotcha. so uh, me coming back here, it's kind of weird to see that everybody's trying to like copy the West when, yeah. when you know, um, <laughs> the, the real deal is to be African centered. And so um, I've been able to be here and just be connected to the to the earth mm-hmm. and and I've learned that, you know, we're so privileged here to be on a land that yes. has, you know, fertile soil and mm-hmm. and sun and ocean and all these animals. And we just can't want for anything. Here, exactly. You know? I mean, you just put anything in the ground and, and it, it grows, germinates. you know. Mm-hmm. And so we have everything that we need here. We just got to switch that mindset to knowing that we have it and stop trying to copy everybody everywhere else. <laughs> We could have Ghana looking like Dubai. I think we can. I really do. I think we can. And that's what being here is kind of, you know, so sad about the situation. It's like one of Ghana could be just also spectacular. Mm -hmm. It really, really could. So when you came here, how how has that been for you seeing that? It's a bit frustrating to see so many people that have that just don't realize what they have. Yes. You know, it's like, oh, you're looking over there, but you've got it all here. (laughs) Exactly. You've got diamonds and bauxite and Mm. oil and and cocoa and and gold and (laughs) fertile land. There's no reason that everybody in Ghana shouldn't be walking around like um, coming to America. Right, that's what I thought. (laughs) Everybody (laughs) should have on fat gold. Right. And, you know, just Just bling, bling, uh, bling, bling, because there's enough (laughs) resources in Ghana for everybody to be just totally well off, not wanting for anything. Exactly. If Ghana closed all of its borders and (laughs) didn't let anybody else in that would come and take the resources, Ghana could produce every single thing that Ghana needed. Exactly. We wouldn't have to base our currency on what the U.S. is doing or the yen or the, the sterling. Because we have everything that we need right here. Because In fact, everybody's coming to get it. Exactly. Because see, that's the kicker. That's really the kicker. Every other nation, if you get my drift, mm-hmm. are coming over here and they recognize what mm-hmm. is here. Mm-hmm. But it's like the people here and we don't. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so sad about the about the situation. It is. You know, it but, really but, but is. it's but it's hopeful because all we need is a mindset change. Mm-hmm. Once we click over and everybody goes, hey, wait a minute. I'm the favored person of the most high. Mm, Thank you. That's why I've been supplied with every single thing I need at my fingertips. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I could never freeze to death like you would in New York. I could never, you know, go home. No, I've got everything here. So now let me act accordingly. Exactly. I'm not going to keep begging and, you know, hooping and hollering and and asking. Because Mm -hmm. the creator has already said, you are of me. Here is what you I'm giving you every single thing you need. See, you see why I love this lady right here? <laughs> I mean, you're just dropping some dimes and some gems. Mm-hmm. You really, really are. So being here in Ghana, have you learned, what is it even, because even though you left in you know, mm-hmm. 50, have, what has it taught you about you through this whole experience and this whole journey? What has Ghana taught you about you? That I've wasted a lot of time. Mm. trying to be, I mean, okay. and I did it. I played the game in America. Mm-hmm. I got the house and the car and the business and I did all of that stuff. And, um, I just couldn't take the, the, um, the violence and the, the, yes. the, the, the deaths of all of my, 
you know, I'd go to a, a community meeting and there mm -hmm. would be six young black men sitting around and then next month, one mm -hmm. of them would be gone. Oh, you know, so-and-so oh, wow. got killed. And then it seemed like that happened just far too often. And then when my 14 year old son was murdered in front of his school, my soul just went, you know? And so I said, let me get out of this place. I couldn't breathe. Literally, I couldn't breathe anymore while I was there. So I said, wow. I'm gonna leave. And then I came here. And what it's taught me living in Ghana is that I don't have to stress all the time. You know, in yes. America, they got you on that. Yeah, it's like a rat race. A rat race. It's like a rat race, Here, exactly. it's okay to get up and have a day where you can <laughs> be you right and you can just chill and it's chill. like you feel more free when you get off the plane mm -hmm. it's like you feel almost that it's like a weight is lifted off of you mm -hmm. versus being in the west and, and what's so funny is that people that are here want to go to the west and, and i say let like them i think i think borders are only man-made i think people should be able to go wherever they want to go however know what you have before you go right. there starving you know, mm -hmm. or have some menial job where you're wiping someone's butt all day long and, yeah. you know, just to make a few coins, you know, think of what you can actually do here with all of the resources that you have in your own place and, exactly. and, and make, you know, you to water your own grass, as they say. You right. Know? We say water your own grass, just water it. So people in the West, some people would say, oh, I don't, you know, want to, want to go. They think that that's the only Thing is the West. It's almost like you're in a fishbowl. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to people out there that think that? Um, I know that it, it, it's by design. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, when they took us over there, uh, they actually started sublim subliminally showing us everything negative about Africans and mm. Africa. That's true. So it made, uh, true. even up to now, you'll mm -hmm. see those uh, commercials, you know, with the yeah. extended, extended bellies and the flies on their faces. And feed the children commercials. Right. Right. And, you know, and you vision. think that that's yeah. Africa. Speaking mm -hmm. of flies, we, we, we do have flies. <laughs> Please forgive us, everybody. <laughs> we have a little bit of a fly situation, but we shall press on, we right? We shall. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, that may be a, you know, they don't realize that the U.S. can fit inside of the continent of Africa about two and a half, three times. That's how large Africa. So when you do see those pockets of places where people are, um, it that too is by design, mm -hmm. where people are struggling for food and things like that, then, then yes, that is a, a condition. And we all need to rally around that condition, especially because mm -hmm. Africa Ghana alone could feed everyone in, in <laughs> those places. Exactly, Ghana alone. But... Um, realize that there are 54 countries in Ghana and then mm -hmm. there, you know, let them see this lovely space. It's just like living in, you know, Europe or America. Right. All it takes is to erect the building. Exactly. It. It's like, it's, it's not deep. As I say, every country has its own vibe. Right. And you have to, you know, find your own vibe and see what groove like works for you. Um, you know, but before, before I even came here, I didn't know that, you know, Ghana has malls. I mean, you know, big buildings Swimming that are, pools. yeah, you can be living the life of Mercedes, okay. I mean, if that's what you're into, you can make it be what you want it to be. You can, definitely. And believe it or not, there's no lions and tigers outside our front door. See? Can you believe that? Can you believe that, guys? No lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. <laughs> so, so I have to ask you this question. Um, before you came, what would you have done differently, if anything? I used to run some really big businesses. I lived in Florida for eight years, mm -hmm. so where we had um, a really big construction company. Uh -huh. And uh, we paid ourselves like $5,000 a week. <laughs> a week? A week. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Had I only known that I was going to come here, I wouldn't have blown all of that money. I was fine. She would have blown her money, to money too. I, was <laughs> I would have harnessed those, mm -hmm. you know, resources and said, okay, I have a plan. I'm mm -hmm. going to be here in Ghana and I'm going to set up a space, number one, to deal with the mindset change yes. uh, that we need to, um, mm -hmm. to work on and then start implementing some mm -hmm. brick and mortar spaces, businesses mm -hmm. and things like that. And then bridge that gap between Oakland and Ghana and have people do a switch, you know, bring the kids, maybe Aww. some kids that are I love that. <coughs> in, in, in um, 
a space where they're mm -hmm. they might get caught up in the system right you know some young right, kids exactly. 11 12 mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and then have them do some exchange come and stay here for three or four months just so they can see that right. things are different and right. everything's not all about Nikes and um, right. Gucci and, Jordan's and, and Jordans and, and all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. that you can actually live your life without somebody's name branded on you because you are important yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I love that. I really do. And all about bridging the gap, mm -hmm. you know, between the diaspora mm -hmm. and here, because right. it's like once that happens, we actually see, of course, we may have been brought up differently mm -hmm. or had different experiences or different cultures, but actually we're not so different at all. So, not at you all. know, not so different at we all. We wake sometimes. up, we eat, we sleep, we love, we right. dance Just like everybody sing. else. Just like everybody else. <laughs> Just like everybody else. So what advice would you give to somebody coming from the West when they come to Ghana, when they're like planning on moving especially? Oh, the first thing you do, you can mm -hmm. do like me, which mm -hmm. I don't suggest, is for the first two years, just spend a whole bunch of money doing stuff. Oh, yes. Because you can spend, <laughs> like, I would spend like 2,000 CDs every mm -hmm. four days. I was back at the ATM, 2,000 CDs. Yes. And then when I decided to say, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So I pooled my resources, I bought some land, and I built this house. Mm -hmm. it took me like four okay. years to build the house, but it's wow. done now, and I love it. But I could have done it so much easier if I hadn't blown all that money. So first thing you do, right. if you plan on coming, mm -hmm. get a place to stay. And from that place, you branch out and go visit mm -hmm. all the different areas of Ghana. Find out which one speaks to you because there's going to be a place yes. that speaks to you. Mm -hmm. You know, well, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to be in the mountains or mm -hmm. by the ocean or in a valley, mm -hmm. but something's going to speak to you. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, I want to build there. You get yourself a plot. Or if there's an already um, constructed uh, uh, space, then you buy, you know, buy into that. And once you get your place to live, and in Ghana, it's like you pay up for like one or two years. Right, right. In that space, then you can actually be thinking, what am I going to do now? Because see, yeah. in America, we're always on that 30-day crash. Exactly. You know, if we don't it's play like, this It's like a time days, clock, right. you know? It's a time clock. Right. Here, you can actually breathe mm -hmm. and do something. If you pay up your rent for a year or two, now you have all of this time. Mm -hmm. And when you pay it up, it might be $5,000, $7,000. Right. You know, exactly. to pay for that. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can actually breathe. And, mm -hmm. and I sometimes I even feel guilty when I'm like, oh, I'm not running around. I don't have anything to do. Right. It's like, okay. It's, it's like, that's fine. It's you okay. Can Life right. is not supposed to be on mm -hmm. someone else's terms all the time. Yeah, not all the time. It's like you just, because that's actually not good for you. It's not. You know, Stress to always is not good be on you. that. It's not to be on that time clock. And mm -hmm. that was some really good advice mm -hmm. because... Ghana, Ghana is not a cheap country. I mean, if you have to, you know, you have to watch your penny. You do. And that's what happened to my mom and I. We were, when we first got in, we were spending, mm -hmm. spending, and we went to the bank account and we were like, okay, this is hilarious <laughs> right now. <laughs> and not in a good way. Not in a good way. <laughs> so please, that is some really good advice. Watch your spending when you come here. Right, and set yourself mm -hmm. up where you can live. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually breathe and your brain, imagine what your brain can think of to benefit you mm -hmm. when you're not using all of your mental energy to make someone else rich at their job. Right, exactly. It's exactly. amazing. You'll come mm -hmm. up with these fabulous uh, ideas and you'll mm -hmm. be like, hey, I actually have the time and the energy to implement this. Right. It's a whole different way of living, a whole different whole way different of, vibe. of, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing because we're not accustomed to that. We're not mm -hmm. accustomed to having time to ourselves to live our own truths and our own purposes. Exactly. Because we're so I, busy exactly. trying to survive. But I think that's what the Most High is taking us to, mm -hmm. is, is the way actually that it should be. Yeah. Back you know, to back natural to, Exactly. Spaces. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Business Lady, you listen, this is the cook, you guys. She cooks amazing. She really, really does. I love her cooking. So, could you please tell us the different business ventures you're in? Well, I just happened to um, go to visit someone who has a mushroom farm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I use mushrooms all the time. And then right. I was like, how much do you sell these for? And he's like, this amount. I was like, okay. Well, I could bring those to the African American Association of Ghana and mm -hmm. to all my other groups, you know, my sister soul group and my, my group in Elmina. 
Now, it's like, because we all use mushrooms. A lot of vegans use right. mushrooms, you know. Mushrooms are really good, They're too. really good. Yeah, so really that's good. that. And then what I've noticed is mm -hmm. that, so I sell mushrooms, fresh and dried, mm -hmm. and also um, salt fish. It's something mm -hmm. I love to cook with, and it stems from me living in the island. So I've lived in Guyana, Jamaica, Barbados, mm -hmm. and Trinidad and Tobago at some point or another. And salt fish is really a staple in a lot of our dishes. But mm -hmm. here, I only see, like, the, like, I think we call it Kobe here. Yeah. And it's usually just a dried tilapia or something like that. So I wanted the big, thick chunks of salt fish that I use. Mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, you have to boil the salt out. But so I started going and buying these huge fish mm -hmm. and just salting them out in the Ghana sun. And, mm, you know, okay. I treat them and then I salt them. And so I've got these big chunks of salt fish that I sell for anybody that wants to make ackee and salt fish or okra and salt fish and balanje and salt or salt fish cakes or any type oh, of okay. salt fish dishes. So those are the two things. And they're not very widely used. No. But if somebody does need them. Exactly. Got them. So you heard that, guys. This is your mushroom and salt fish lady. Personally, <laughs> I've had some of the mushrooms. And they cooked up so good. They really did. I was like, OK, they're nice and fresh. So please, if you guys need some mushrooms and salt fish, this is the lady. Got them. the lady to go. Alrighty, Miss Naya. Oh my gosh, I can sit and talk to you for hours. I really can. I love her. I really, really do. I love you as well. Aww, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Okay. I feel so honored. And thank you guys for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. And all of her information will be in the description box if you want some of her items. Okay, until next time. Mwah. Thank you.